بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters Ramadan Kareem Ramadan Mubarak We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us during this uh, blessed month a month full of khayrat, of gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, before the month of Ramadan and even during the month of Ramadan, when we think about, I'm going to fast tomorrow, we almost dread it. Because for many of us, when we think of siyam, of fasting, we think of hunger and thirst. We think almost of punishment. And that is because we don't understand what sawm means. Saum is literally to be still. It's the opposite of movement. And so if the air is still, the Arabs would say Saumat al that the air is still. The air is doing Saum. The trees are doing Saum, meaning the branches are not moving. Yes? And that the horse, they would train the horse with Saum. Yes, they would prevent it from food and drink. But they would also train it. They would train the horse. They would train it for battle. And they would put it through strenuous exercises, but there's no enemy. But to prepare it for that enemy. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed month forces us to not eat and drink by, of course, making fasting obligatory. And it is a, it is a training a training ground, a training camp for us to face off with our enemy, the shaitan, outside of the month of Ramadan. Now, we previously said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of our fast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also in no need of us going hungry and thirsty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at the fast that... that falls short of all of the conditions. And so what are the conditions? We know that fasting has legal conditions. So that we don't eat or drink or have intimacy from, uh, from dawn until sunset. Yes. And that we don't do anything that is a substitute to these three. And that we observe an intention at the start of the month or every morning before we start our fast. That's the legal definition of fasting. But what is the, what is the spirit of the fast? The fast which really counts in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just the hunger and the thirst. It's the fast of the tongue. It is the fast of the eyes. It's the fast of the ears. It's the fast of the hands. It's the fast of the stomach, the fast of the feet, and the fast of the private parts. It means that the whole body fasts because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyam. O you who have believed, fasting has been prescribed upon you. And as the mashayikh say, Allah didn't say fasting has been prescribed upon your stomachs. Fasting has been prescribed upon your mouths. But upon you, meaning upon your very being, your entire being, fasting is an obligation. In the previous nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made fasting an obligation. And in Bani Israel, when they fasted, they had to fast from speaking as well. And so Maryam alayhi salam, when she, uh, uh, when she pledged an oath to fast, and she returned carrying her newborn son, Isa, Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam. Okay, she pointed to herself, yes, that I have pledged an oath to fast. That I have pledged an oath to fast. And in the fast is included that I will abstain from speaking. But Allah looked upon the ummah of his most beloved, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and had mercy on us and granted us the respite where he removed this condition. He said, speak. But only speak and say what is permissible. Only say what is lawful. And only say what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, if we can't say what is pleasing to Allah, just don't say anything. And that's, that's better, as we'll come to see. And so fasting has been prescribed upon our entire being. 
And so the seven organs that we mentioned, the eyes and the ears and the tongue and the hands and the stomach and the feet and the private parts, these constitute the body. So there is the fast of the body. And the body fasts from committing outward sins. The eyes fast from looking at the haram. The eyes fast from flicking through TikTok, looking at women, looking at these people in the, in the gym, undressed, this and that. The eyes fast from pornography. The eyes fast from casting the gaze and the sight upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from looking at. The ears fast from listening to gossip, from listening to, to lewd speech, from listening to talk of a sexual nature. The tongue fasts from lying and swearing and backbiting and the many, many sins of the tongue. Many, many sins of the tongue. The hands fast from abusing their authority. How many people have authority? All of us have authority. You either have authority at work, you have people who work under you, you may have authority, for example, you're in the police or in the army, you're in the emergency services, you are in government. You don't abuse your authority. You have authority over your family, your wife, you don't abuse your authority. You have authority over your children, that you don't abuse your authority, because abuse of authority is a sin of the hand. You don't earn haram. And you don't spend on haram. The sins of the stomach as well. So we're not talking about the literal fast here, but we're talking about the fast, the abstention from the sins. That the stomach does not consume money that has been earned through haram, through fraud, tax fraud, insurance fraud, benefits fraud. Uh, uh, taking money, uh, the inheritance of our family. Oh, my sister, I don't care. She didn't work on the land. She didn't help with the business. So she's not going to get anything. So the stomach must fast as well. The feet must fast as well, meaning that they don't carry you to a place of sin. You don't go to the bookies, right? You don't go to a casino. You don't go to a club, to a pub, to a rave, to a party. Your feet don't carry you anywhere that is haram. And of course, the private parts are to... Uh, fast as well from any sin and so that is the spirit that is the fast of the body <coughs> of the organs from committing sins what is the psalm of the mind the mind fasts as well from lewd thoughts from illicit thoughts from sinful thoughts now obviously many of us may say you know who of us doesn't have doesn't have like a sinful thought Every now and then. And so the sin is when you entertain the thought. And so the shaitan, what does he do? The shaitan does not appear before us and speak to us and tell us, do this, do that. The shaitan plants a thought, plants an idea. And so if, when you realize this is a haram thought, thinking about a woman, I'm thinking about defrauding somebody, I'm thinking about a con, I'm thinking about a scam, I'm thinking about how to steal, I'm thinking about how to cheat in my exam, how to cheat in my coursework. So many different types of sins, I'm not going to list them all, of course. And so, when a thought is planted in, what do you do? There are two things that you can do. You can either resist the thought, which is very difficult for the untrained seeker. The seeker is the person seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and we should all be seekers. We should all be salikeen, all seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's closeness and pleasure. But for the untrained person, it is difficult to resist the thought. And so what do the, what do the mashayikh say? They say you divert, divert. Meaning what? You have a sinful thought now, planted by the shaitan. And so what do you do? Think about something that's permissible. Think about a car, think about your dinner, think about, think about uh, uh, bread, think about rice, think about curry, think about the shopping you want to do, think about furniture, think about anything that is permissible. But whatever, and that's diversion. So you divert. First option is to, is to resist, but that's difficult if you're not trained. But everyone can divert. So when the sinful thought comes, you divert. What is the sin then? The sin is that you entertain the thought. 
That means the thought comes to mind and then what you do is you leave it in your mind to linger. You start to entertain the thought, to go along with it, to plan, to scheme, to think, yeah, how could I get away with this? Yeah, how could I perform this sin? And that is a sin of the mind. And so the mind is to fast as well. There's the psalm of the mind as well from not thinking about anything unlawful. There is a fast of the heart, of the qalb. The qalb is the, uh, uh, the, qalb is the moral self. It's where your character is. And so we are to fast and to abstain from envy, to abstain from greed, to abstain from hasad, jealousy, to abstain from hatred, to abstain from these vicious diseases such as kibr, arrogance and pride and self-likeness, to be pleased and, and like yourself over others. These are vicious diseases that are destructive. And do you know who they destroy? They destroy you. They don't destroy anybody else because they consume you. And so the heart is to abstain. There is a soul, a stillness, a calmness that is supposed to descend upon the heart in the fast. That you, again, you get a, if, what, because what will happen is a quality from the heart will make its way up to the mind for you to start to think about it. Mm, that person, look at what he's got, look at his car. Oh, I wish he never had that car. You say, no. May Allah protect him, protect his property, protect his family. May Allah increase him and increase me. The only solution for jealousy is that you make dua for the other person and for yourself. The solution for arrogance, it's no, well, it's no good saying, brother, you shouldn't have takabbur, brother, you shouldn't have ujb, brother, you shouldn't have arrogance and pride. Yeah, yeah, obviously. That's like going to somebody who has a who's ill, sat in hospital on bed, and telling them, you know, you shouldn't be ill, you, you should be healthy. Well, he knows that. Do you have the solution? Do you have the cure? No, 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 make dua. Okay, you don't know the solution. You're saying make dua, of course make dua. But there are also means. What are the means? If you don't know the means, then refer to somebody who doesn't, who knows the means. And if you don't know somebody who knows the means, then just you make dua for them and don't go and make their lives more difficult for them. So for arrogance, for example, ooh, look at me, look at my body, look at my looks, look at my money. Look. Who gave you all of that? No one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah who gave you it can take it from you. And so what is the solution for your arrogance? The solution for takabbur is very simple actually. That what you do is you give back the blessing to Allah. Meaning that here I am, I have a blessing, I first of all acknowledge and recognize it's from Allah. Second, I give shukr to Allah. I give gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is me returning the blessing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying to Allah, Oh Allah, this is from you. This is not from my own doing. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. And by doing so, by doing so, you don't take credit. Because if you take credit, you do what Qarun did. I was given this wealth. I had tons and tons of gold. I was given this wealth because of the knowledge that I have. I have. I, you know, I and me only come in the Quran from Shaytan and from the likes of Fir'aun and Qarun and Haman. These are the people who say, Me, Shaytan said, Ana khayrun min. I'm better. Yes? Assuming he was, which he wasn't anyway, who would have made you superior? But Allah. And so the solution to the, 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 the evil qualities of the heart, especially one like arrogance, is that you say, Oh Allah, you gave me this and you can take it from me. And so Allah, I voluntarily give it back to you in the way of shukr. And it's not from me. And so I should not be proud of it. How can you be proud of how tall you are? Did you make yourself tall? Who makes himself tall? How can you be proud of your looks? Oh, my eyebrows, my cheekbones, my this, my that, my features. Who gave you those features? Oh, if you put makeup on, fair enough. You know, you can make an animal look like you then. Okay? But who made you beautiful? Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And the nafs, the nafs, which is the emotional self. It is the, uh, the, emo the emotional self where the desires are. That also fasts as well. What is its psalm? Its psalm is to fast from the evil desires, from the bad desires. Now, desires in and of themselves are not evil. We have the desires of the stomach, desires of our base self basically to reproduce, right? We have desire for food, for drink, for things that are beautiful. And so the fasting of the, of the nafs is that we say, okay, right, I like to eat. I like to eat. Who doesn't like to eat? But um, first of all, I make sure what I eat is from halal. Meaning I earn it through halal. Alhamdulillah, I'm speaking to people. No, no, no. I, I'm assuming not a single person listening is going to eat pig, pork, right? That's not what I mean by eating halal. Meaning that you, that you eat from wealth that you earned through lawful, permissible, halal means. That's number one. Number two, that you recognize that this food that you're eating, rizq, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, you can recognize that your action of eating is an action of the people of paradise. And so there are, you see how many different ways you can make this normal act, right? Which you say, okay, we share with the animals, it becomes worship. It becomes worship. Who, as a married person, doesn't want the company and the intimacy of their spouse? And so first of all, you seek Allah's protection from the shaitan, that Allah remove the shaitan from, uh, protect you and your offspring from the shaitan. And then you remember, oh, subhanAllah, this is enjoyable, but it's fleeting, it's temporary. I long for what is, what is endless and eternal in paradise. And so in that, you are conscious and you are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're conscious and you are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's the fast. But what we have turned fast into is hunger and thirst. And how many of us change during the month of Ramadan? How many of us realize that Allah doesn't want us to just go hungry and thirsty? That's not the point. Allah is above torturing us in such a manner. Because that's how we see it, as we mentioned in the start. We think of it as torture, but really it's not torture. We are supposed to, as the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever does not abandon evil speech and evil actions, then Allah has no use for such a fast. Allah has no use for a good fast either, but it means that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you hand in an application, okay, and you put your name, you put everything, in, but you know, you use the wrong pen. I, what's this? I can't accept this. I can't accept this. It doesn't meet the conditions. So the conditions aren't just that you go hungry and thirsty. The conditions are that you stop speaking evil and you stop acting evil. You stop acting evil. And in our next episode, inshallah, we'll be expanding on those two through the hadith of uh, Anas in which the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi gave Abu Dhar maybe the greatest gift that he's ever given the Ummah after Tawheed and the Fara'id. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from our, our fast to be more than just hunger and thirst. You see, in fasting, we are reflecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat, his attributes. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us his khulafa, his representatives, his ambassadors on earth. Now, if as a country, you have an ambassador to the UN, an ambassador to other country, to another country, that ambassador has to, uh, uh, that ambassador has to reflect the values and the principles and the qualities of their country, which has appointed them. Yes, and when you look at that ambassador, you should you should remember and you should be uh, uh, prompted, and you recall their country of origin, the country which they represent. And so similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us his khulafa on earth. We're his ambassadors. We are his representatives on earth. And so what does that mean that we're his rep representatives on earth? It means we have to reflect Allah's values and principles on earth. 
and that when people see us, they remember the one who appointed us as Khulafa on earth. So how do we reflect the values and principles of the one who appointed us, Allah? We reflect the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sifat of Allah. Allah loves justice, adl, and so we reflect that. Allah is ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, and he loves that, so we reflect those qualities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sabur he is the most patient, and so we should reflect that quality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a latif, he is the subtle and the gentle, okay? And so we are to reflect those qualities in us. That when people see you, they remember Allah. And that's the, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he said that the best friend, who's the best friend? The one whom when you see, he reminds you of Allah. He reminds you of Allah. So everything in our life is supposed to reflect a sifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in fasting, in fasting, why, is, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that fasting is for me and I reward and I reward for it. I reward for fasting. He leaves his food and his drink and his desire for me. Because it is a form of reflecting, it is a form of reflecting a sifa of Allah. Allah does not eat, Allah does not drink, and Allah has no wife. And so we reflect that. And when we reflect the sifa of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us in higher and higher esteem. Also, fasting is an expression of love. We hear this a lot and it all sounds sometimes a bit airy-fairy, but hear me out. Imagine a king gives you everything. Food and drink and cars and houses and so much. And then you say, how can I thank the king? There's nothing I can give him that will uh, match what he has given me. Nothing I can give him will ever express my gratitude for what he has given me. And so what do you do? You then leave what he has given you and you don't enjoy it and you go to them to just be in their company. And you say, there's nothing that I can do for you to thank you except to just sit in your great company and not enjoy, not use the things that you have given me because that I, that's not what I wanted, I want you. And that's with a human being. And so with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing that we can give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will benefit from, nothing. Allah does not benefit from his creation nor is he harmed by his creation. And so the act of fasting is an expression of shukr and of love that oh Allah, there's nothing that I can give you. There's nothing that can benefit you and so I will leave what you have made permissible for me at any other time just for your sake. For your sake to show gratitude to you, to show gratitude to you, to spend that time with you, to copy you and see how we realize that Psalm is therefore an expression of shukr, an expression of love. Now of course these expressions of shukr and love can only really come through prescription, through divine legislation. And that's again Allah's mercy. If you remember in the last episode, we mentioned that fasting is like a forced medicine. Ramadan, the fast of Ramadan is like a forced medicine. That's forced mercy. And also, this is like a, fasting is like a forced form of us showing shukr. But really, you will not receive that reward unless you're conscious of what it is that you're doing. You're conscious that you are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore, every pang of hunger that you feel, Every time your mouth goes dry and you're thirsty, you begin to enjoy it because this is, this is my way of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my way of showing gratitude and love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing that I can do, the best thing that I can do, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fasting is for me and I reward for it. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who realize the reality of psalm, the reality of the fast. It's not just going hungry and thirsty. But rather, it is the soul, the fast of the entire body, and the mind, and the heart, and the soul, in order for us to cleanse and purify ourselves, so that we can have the, the, the intended outcome, that we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, light of sins, and clean and pure. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم